All right, let's get right to it. It is Thursday, August 27th. We're going to be mostly focusing on the potential for severe weather later tonight over southern Minnesota and southwestern and western Wisconsin. And also, uh, along with that severe weather, we would be getting some rains, of course, and I'm concerned that some of these rains are going to be torrential and, and heavy in nature where we may be getting somewhere in that two, three, four inches plus of rain in certain small localized areas, uh, especially later tonight and into tomorrow morning. Uh, visible satellite loop right now is kind of starting to show Mother Nature's hand right now. You can see some of these cumulus clouds now here over southern Minnesota and southwestern Wisconsin. Those cumulus clouds now are riding along and just south of a boundary of a front that's located right about here from just near the Twin Cities Metro on west into eastern South Dakota and then on east into Wisconsin. Uh, it's separating low dew points up here in northern Minnesota from very hot, warm, soupy dew points here over southern Minnesota. And I think that boundary is going to eventually become active here over the next several hours again, especially as we get into the later evening and overnight hours. Uh, speaking of that boundary, here it is. These are the dew points now. These are the dew points late this afternoon and into early this evening. You can clearly see where that front is located, or at least that boundary is located. It's right here from about the Twin Cities Metro on west into South Dakota. Again, dew points are in the low to mid 70s. You're sweating if you're along and south of that uh, boundary over the southern third of Minnesota. And then as you head north, look at how the dew points crash into the uh, low to mid 50s over northern Minnesota. So no doubt as this dry air tries to press south towards southern Minnesota, I think that storms are going to erupt here over uh, sections of southern Minnesota. It's gonna, I believe it's going to be a fairly narrow line of storms, but yes, they are going to be uh, dangerous in nature at times, and they should pack a punch with plenty of lightning and again, heavy rains and maybe some strong winds. Now, the reason why I'm a little bit more confident, well, I should actually say a lot more confident in storms overnight tonight than I was back on Monday night is because of the winds in certain levels of the atmosphere and the fact that we actually have a disturbance. And you can see it here. When you look at the 500 millibar level, and, and that's about 20,000 feet in our atmosphere, and you look at the winds, you can see kind of just a little bit of a buckling of the winds here heading into southern Minnesota as we go into early, early tomorrow morning. And look at how strong these winds are at about 20,000 feet. They're up around 60 to 70 knots. So that's actually pretty impressive, at least from a severe weather and uh, storm standpoint. Then as we go down to about 10,000 to 15,000 feet in our atmosphere, our winds again are strong and we got that buckle in the atmosphere. That's a disturbance. Um, so no doubt we have some energy coming into, into southern Minnesota as we go into late tonight, tonight and tomorrow morning. And even at the lowest layers of our atmosphere, at about five to 10,000 feet, you can see winds are starting to come up from the southwest. So we're getting a turning and an increasing in winds in our atmosphere. And that is, once again, a real good recipe for thunderstorm development. And these thunderstorms should maintain their intensity as we go through the overnight hours. Uh, speaking of the storms, this is Future Radar now. From the NAM Nest Computer Model Guidance, and take a look at uh, where the showers and storms are late this afternoon. They're over the Dakotas, and then of course, we're keeping an eye on what's gonna happen out here in central and eastern South Dakota and southern Minnesota as we go through the evening hours as storms fire over South Dakota later this evening. And then these storms have a beeline towards southern Minnesota as we go through the overnight hours. So I think this is gonna be one of your classic MCS or mesoconvective system type of, of an environment. And uh, yes, a fairly decent sized co complex of storms should develop in this environment. They'll move quickly, they'll move quickly to the east, but pack a punch as they roll through Southern Minnesota. And we need to hope that these storms don't train in the same areas and produce flooding rains. And there is that possibility for that. So we'll have to see how storms develop this evening because if they develop sooner than, in, than expected, I think then our potential for some localized flooding is going to increase. Now, looking at rain totals over the next 36 hours, so this is through tomorrow afternoon. And this is from 
the NAM computer model guidance, in fact, it's the NAM 3K guidance, look at how it kind of separates two areas of significant rain, one just to the north and one just to the south of the Twin Cities Metro. Not sure how much I'm buying into that, but what this really tells me is that the activity, at least the heaviest activity, and uh, the, the most uh, severe of the activity with the heavy rains will be scattered in nature. And yes, it may be in two distinct um, areas where, where, this, uh, thunderstorm, where these thunderstorms develop. But again, look at some of these amounts. We're talking about amounts in excess of two inches in some locations. Um, and yeah, that certainly would prompt some local small stream flooding, especially in areas that uh, have had quite a bit of rain here over the last month or two. Um, speaking of the severe weather, of course, uh, we put this out yesterday and it hasn't changed much. This is the area that I'm most concerned about for severe weather later on tonight and into early tomorrow morning, basically from the Twin Cities Metro on south to the Minnesota-Iowa border and then east into Wisconsin. Um, and uh, yes, strong winds, certainly some heavy rains, potential for hail, um, and some of this may be flooding rains in nature. So we'll need to keep an eye to the sky as we go through the next 12 to 24 hours.